Lord, teach me your word. Father, teach me. My God, I want to hear your word. I want to hear it, Lord. My God, I want to know your word. God, teach me your word. God, teach me your word. I want to know your word. Take it to God in prayer. Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Almighty Father, these are the people that work for you in various parts of the world. Mankind are looking to them, knowingly or unknowingly, consciously or unconsciously. You have said emphatically, your eyes are on holiness, revival, movement worldwide. And that's true. We have perceived so too. God, let these people be trained. Let it be training that is not just soft, love, play. Training that will make them cry. Do it for us in Jesus' name. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The submission of the woman in marriage. The submission of the woman in marriage. In Genesis chapter 14, verse 14 to verse 16. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them. And he, I mean, he and his servants by night and smote them and pursued them unto Hoba, which is on the left hand of Damascus. Here we learn about training. Abraham trained his servant born in his own house. The nature of training depends on the nature of the person training. 
The kind of training depends on the vision of the person training. But the training is to achieve a purpose. And the purpose is in the visioner. Abraham trained ordinary men to become soldiers that could fight both day and night. This battle was fought in the night. It was a battle that the people went without knowing how those other people were. What clothes were they wearing? What weapons were they carrying? They didn't know that. But they went for the battle. And the Bible says they overcame. Train the person to produce result. Train the person so that he can produce result. Train the person to produce result. Now, being in holiness movement and I being Abraham, I'm, if I want you to go to this heaven that I have as vision, I must train you to qualify for heaven. Again, I know the successful ministry is the ministry of holiness, righteousness, truth, no lie, no evil, no unrighteousness. If I want this ministry to abide forever, I must train you to live righteous in ministry. Very vital. Sure, I have done so for the generality of the people. I must do it also for you. I must do it for you. Training actually has much to do with the physical. Training has much to do with the flesh. It's like you are training a person to learn to stand on one leg for two hours. It's not easy. You are trying to make him do that which is not common. Yes. If you succeed, you might be saying, what is the value of standing on one leg for two hours? What will it bring to you? Ask God, who was producing perfect righteousness and be, but began it with the training of the flesh, with the training of the mind. His, his training was so critical after the flesh. Yes, don't touch a dead thing. If you touch a dead thing, you're unclean. Why are you applying reasoning? Leave God alone with his training. God, is it not you who ended the life of the person? Is it not what everybody goes through? And we must help to lift him up from there. Where are we, where are we committing sin now? in have lifting up a dead man or having to shift him, remove him from the road. Don't ask that question. Just go and do. If you learn this, 
when my instruction comes in real righteousness, you will take it by faith without asking questions. I'm just training you. Learn to do things without asking questions. Don't plant your crop with diverse seed. Don't. What is it? The ground can take every seed that is planted. And they will both produce very well. The ground note can be planted alongside with the corn. And do do very well. I said, don't do it. But why? I don't see any reason in it. Then you are a stubborn person. You are the type that when I say don't commit adultery, you will commit adultery. Because I want to train your heart on obedience. But you are looking for reasoning. They just shall live by faith and not by reasoning. Are you going to compare reasoning with God? Who is the tra trainer? He is bringing up things to know the state of your heart, to train your heart, to learn how to do it without asking a question. Soldiers do training. Endurance trek. They walk for long, long distance. Early morning, long distance, and walk back. What for? In case you are abandoned in war, or you escape in war, you will not, your mind has been trained not to count it anything to walk back home would care. Your mind has been trained. In fact, part of the training is to put broken bottles, plant broken bottles in row. Make you enter inside. To crawl inside with care else they will pierce your body. Say so these people are wicked. Is part of training. And the commander will not be laughing. You look at him. This man is wicked. How do you think that? Then don't be a soldier. If I will not wash your feet, you cannot be part of me. That is it. So, the whole purpose of training is to remove self from you. Self-defense. Self-protection. Self-promotion, self-what? I make you malleable, meek, gentle, submissive to the voice of the commander. Except in this degenerating de generation, the soldier in the barrack does not have no in answer to his commander. However tall and however fat, however what, as long as the person standing be, be, before him ha, has higher rank, he submits. Submit, yes sir. Then go and criticize after that. Because that's flesh. If you don't submit now, you will see. Your, you will see. So they have learned it. So, the trainer determines the trainees. If this be so, should I have a people like you and not put you on, under training to affect your flesh, your pride should die? Reason it yourself. Are we ordinary soldiers? Are we not heavenly representatives? Representing God, the holiest. If that is so, 
can we not submit to the training of the father of, of the father of the spirits and live Why do you feel superior to training, to instruction? You feel angry. For what, what reason? What is your reason? Are you, are you bigger than God? Then you should not be here. Everybody that is here is lower than God. Is lower than God. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have given you Aaron. Aaron will serve you. Aaron will be your mouthpiece. Yes. Aaron is the eldest, elder brother. Aaron, Miriam, Moses. But Aaron should serve Moses in the things of God. If Aaron never went through training to break himself down, he couldn't do that work. So, in some ways, you could be higher than your brother in any other way. Higher than your sister. But you must break down. Otherwise, you can't serve well. One thing we know They don't beat people like you. You are bigger than beating. BB, you are bigger than beating. But are you bigger than beating if you were a soldier in the barrack? Hey. They call it corporal punishment. It's part of it. If discipline is not instilled into organization, there will be scarcely order in that organization. Scarcely. Because it is part of the thing that melts people. It's part of the thing that creates fear into your heart. What do you mean if there were no prison, police station, in the nation? Can there be law and order? Never. What if there were no hellfire? Can there be righteousness? No. We must instill discipline into this movement. If we were not doing it because we were in the Old Testament, now we have come to New Testament. A New Testament of discipline. We have cajoled you enough. If we just go by cajoling, you will not make it. Some gentleness makes them great. Others, gentleness spoil them. Wisdom says, vary approach according to circumstance. Vary approach according to time. So we must vary approach to learn to discipline people so that righteousness can maintain in the church. We, made, we let, know, let the women know that you are the wife of a coordinator. Does not mean you are automatically going to be the women coordinator forever or even at all. No. There, as there is qualification for a man coordinator, there is also qualification for the women coordinator. Yes, there is also qualification for the women pastor, women of us. I mean, the man overseer, his wife as a coordinator must be qualified. If she's not qualified, please, the Bible says in James chapter 2. Verse 1, James chapter 2, verse 1, the Bible tells us here, saying, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the Lord of glory with respect of persons. Have not with respect of persons. <laughs> In Makodi, when I was a deeper life overseer, state overseer in Makodi, there was a crusade we organized for Pastor Kumoy. He came. We were at stage. And I thought to excite him. I said, sir, the person sitting there is the vice chancellor of uh, the, this university here. It didn't move him. He didn't give a comment. Because what does that mean? I was ashamed. <laughs> I'm telling you, I picked it from there. Am I asking him to recognize persons? If in love and wisdom, we need to do that to encourage them in the faith, good, but it has no meaning. He is not better than the poor man that is there. He came for his soul. Everybody is there for his soul. Does he have double soul? No. So, my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Therefore, don't think we will be respecting you. We do that in love, because love is the greatest thing. But we're not under bondage. What's your reason? For thinking we should respect you above others. Can you give a reason? Are you from heaven? If you are from heaven but you are not son of God, you must have been an angel. And angels are ministering spirits sent to serve us. Then which other thing you are? Even the son of God himself, when found in fashion as a man, humbled himself and became a servant. Then you now, you are who? So, this tells you people, in your respective places, don't respect persons. You will corrupt this ministry. You will change your doctrine. This person is here, I can't preach this. This person is here, I can't do this. And God will forsake you. It's difficult to be the man God has chosen. It's difficult. He will not pardon these things you are saying. It's you who are thinking you have been pardoned. You are careless. You are not following the rule. You are not there. Let's sit quiet, no movement. No movement. You're not there. He sees you and he bears with you. The wisdom of God is, since the people are not there, let me allow him to join the preachers. But he can't come to heaven. Because for heaven he's not qualified. But I will allow him to join the preachers. You don't know God. You don't know that he does not respect persons. The Bible tells us, yes, in First Peter, very important, be careful. Chapter 1, verse 15 to 17 it goes but as he which had called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written be ye holy for i am holy and if ye call on the father who without respect of persons judge it according to every man's work past the time of your sojourning here in fear it's you who will say, hey, my husband, the way you treated me in the public, God, I, I, you, you, I'm ashamed. Does God get ashamed when he treats you in the public? 
if you do evil and it warrants public treatment, you will receive it. If it is not given to you, you have made your husband to compromise. Holiness is reduced because he's respecting you above the world. At that time, what should be done to you is public rebuke. He didn't give to you because you're going to quarrel him at home. Your husband is not among holy preachers. He only preaches holiness in the pulpit. He does not act it. You have overcome him. For your sake, his name has been stricken out. He, for your sake, for your character, for your lack of submission, for your pride as a woman, you have removed your husband from holiness preachers. It's like the revelation said, watchman, the watchman charismatic renewal pastor was among the holiness preachers. But the other time Jesus came, he removed him. Because he failed. All the chances he gave him for holy communion, he didn't obey. You are not, what makes you holy? I just put you at probation. Removed. Be sure your wife does not remove you from this list of holiness preachers. If she makes you to compromise, if you get into fear, that you cannot train that woman. Your ministry is gone. Satan can neatly go to her and remove Adam. Remove both Adam and Eve from the garden. Don't allow that to repeat. Don't. Allow her. It's better Sarah would have cried in Abraham's house than to give birth to Ishmael. That is the problem of the world today. Because he will be soft to Sarah. I'm telling you women. Because you can spoil this work. Your husband is doing by stubbornness. By rebellion. By disobedience. By evil speaking. By anger. Anger rested in the bosom of fools. By being foolish. Provoking the man to anger. Provoking the man. Yes. I told you people. Okay, that one I told the coordinators alone. That a woman and her daughter want, want to kill the father. So, the debate has been going on between her and her daughter. This is reality. This is reality. It is a subject of prayer up to now. I know the people I'm talking about. Yes. The woman walked on her daughter to agree. She didn't. Both in witchcraft. She didn't. The, the woman, ah, you know you are in Horemo. This Horemo does not want, I know you want to have a boyfriend, but Horemo cannot allow you. And your daddy is here. I know you want to dress yourself well, put on jewelry. This is a woman that comes to church and holy, holy, holy. Terrible human beings. I know you want to dress this, but you know because of your father we can't do it. That is it. And how unfortunately their action affects this man. Because they know how to provoke him to anger. He's a human being. Know how to provoke him before, before you know it. Moses has said something. So, be very careful. Don't aim at destroying your husband. Because you want to live holiness movement. 
Where do you, where must he die? And now you are planning that he should die in sin and miss heaven with all his commitment. Die. I want to leave this place for my convenience. That is what is going on. That's the plan of wicked people. Yes. So, fear God. And if such a woman like this is pushing you to have her way, you're always agreeing. Why are you agreeing? To your death. Because it's removing you from righteousness. Israel will want to remove somebody outside the gate before they stone him with stone. Get you out of righteousness, then stone you. You lose in double sense. You refuse to stand on righteousness because of the authority of the woman, Jezebel. Now you're going. You've missed all your commitment. You've missed it, and you're missing it everywhere forever you missed it if you were for god you will stand firm i say you can't move me go and cry when you finish crying then stop don't talk don't talk uh, you're not going to talk to me don't talk. close your body who told you that i'm created for sex i can keep it under righteousness the where sin does abound Grace does much more abound. When a situation comes that you may not have enjoy a pleasure, and that is a situation of sin, the grace of God will come upon you and keep you strong and remove those things from your life, and you'll be you'll be in order. So let's serve the Lord now back to the woman submission in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 I read from verse 21 to 24 submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. It doesn't mean the man cannot submit to a woman too in righteousness. God can use the woman. Submit. When the Lord chose to give her good idea, good this, and she needs you Submit. Submit. My wife was given the vision to see this, and God chose it like that. I submit to her. Pray for these people. I come to pray. Am I submitting to her? Not to the Lord. I said, No, how can a man be receiving instruction from a woman? Then the will of God will not be done. The will of God will not be done. And you will be judged by the living God because of your pride. Cannot God use your wife? Cannot God give gifts to your wife? Who told you that there are non entities? Is it God that said the women should not speak in the church that is the one giving them gifts? Gifts of speaking. If he is the one saying, women should not speak in the church, let him not give them gifts. Let him not give them gifts. Otherwise, Jeremiah said, I chose to keep quiet and spoke nothing. But the word was burning inside me like fire. And I say, who can contain? I must speak. This woman has been given a gift. Submit to her gift so that God should be praised. Submit to her for her gift's sake so that God 
should be praised and honored. In fact, the whole thing is back to you. Because you eventually, all that is hers is yours. All that is her own is yours. Whatever achievement she makes is yours. If they bring it properly to human society, it's you. So, understand this. Back to it. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. In the fear of God. Wives, answer yes. When I say wives, you answer me, you hear? Wives. Yes. Thank you very much. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. On. Many of you know how to bow to other people's husband. And the person will be saying, Kai, bro, bro pastor, you have a wonderful wife. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. He didn't know that he, he, he met with a cat that, that was going gently like that. He thought that he's a human being complete. He didn't know. But normally when they say, ha, God bless you with your wife, don't be telling them that it's a terrible person. Don't say like that. Say amen. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Say amen. But when you say amen, say, God, you understand. Submit yourselves to your own husband. As unto the Lord. This is where the matter is. Does your wife recognize that God is there? Is she born again? When a matter comes up, not involving you, involving God absolutely. Does she bow to it? Does she submit to it? If she does not submit to God, then the foundation is not there. Her submission to the husband will be mechanical will be by fight, by quarrel. Because the soft heart that submits to God is not there. As unto the Lord. So women, you must be born again. If you are not born again, it's not easy. It's not, it's not that it's not easy. It's impossible. <laughs> Many of you see some unbelieving marriages. How a, the man lives with the wife, they laugh. You say, hey, this man's wife. See how he loved the, she loves the husband. Hey, this man's wife. Sometimes when a man carries a god and the god is following him, he says, hey, this god is obedient. The fight that they have been fighting, the god knows that if you want to go safely, follow. That's why you came and saw them peaceful. <laughs> and you think that there is any serious salvation going on there. It's fight. It's quarrel. It's slap. It's anger. But that's not the way the Christian home should be. It should be gentle and peaceable. That will happen when the woman is born again. But now we have known that born again is not enough. The Adamic nature is still there. It means it will take a sanctified woman to give the husband 
a glorious submission it will take a sanctified woman to give the husband a glorious submission otherwise Adamic nature will always be disturbing her always many use anger to control their husbands many and the man becomes afraid inside his inside inside a man said they were bought in deeper life some years ago he said when i see my wife lie down the wife was a member of choir i think on when he slept and woke up i said i saw my wife lie down. i said see her lying down now in his mind his body is moved to go and touch the wife but will a man touch fire Does he want trouble that night? If you don't want trouble, leave that woman alone. And he saw that I was looking at her like this. <laughs> he said, I'm telling you. He said, Look at her. <laughs> and she's a Christian in court. She's a Christian. Anger was burning. Who made me to marry this woman? How did I? And I think they wedded in the church. How did it happen? That is it. Submit to your husband as unto the Lord. As you submit to God. But if you have no God to submit to, Ah, what if even you have idol or you are mummy water or witch? How do you do it now? However, you pretend it will show. However, therefore, seek deliverance for to be a wonderful wife to your husband. Don't be ashamed, reveal yourself, seek deliverance. To be a wonderful wife. So that both you and your husband can make it to heaven. Otherwise, not by your power. You can't do it by your power. I didn't say you, because you cannot do it, you can go and be doing your worst. No. We have Muslims who are living well in, in, living well in court. You must still do it. There's moral power that you can exercise. Although not perfectly, because it cannot be, except a man is born again. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. He cannot have access to real righteousness. But there's a moral power. Perfect that moral power. I was in India, and I watched Indian hospitals. How many? Okay, that was uh, when I discovered Prasanna. Apollo. Apollo's Hospital in India. In, uh, in, uh, Bangalore. Bangalore. Thank you. It was there I discovered Prasanna. The nurses that were serving in the hospital were all born again. Although they have their Hindu mark. Born again in the sense that you will see them so gentle, so loving. You say, ha, ah, no anger. These ones are serious. So they train them. None of them is born again. <laughs> it's training. But we want to carry you beyond this mechanical obedience to real Christian obedience by salvation, deliverance, sanctification, and holiness. 
as unto the Lord. It goes. Verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. We want to stop here. In marriage, the husband is the head of the wife. In, my, in America, in marriage, who is the head? Wife. Yes, wife is the head. The wife... Don't allow your wife to be a wicked man. If you marry a wicked woman, trouble has come to you. If you build your house, do all decoration, or buy your house, do this, and the woman feels, I don't think my husband needs to be here. It's just to call the police and say, my husband raped me yesterday, yesterday night. Finish. When the police comes, the husband is not even aware that you have called police. When police comes, uh, where is the man? Okay, you. You are needed in police station. For what? Go there. What happened? You raped your wife yesterday. Myself, go and answer in police station. <laughs> and then, there is nothing he can say in that house. Not no word. There's no word. As he's going to police station, the matter is going to court. I didn't know, and in fact, I was not in the house that time. Woman, your husband says he was in the house. Come, how did I rape you? Did I even touch you that day? You touched me. I didn't know say keep quiet. Your wife has said it. And by law, what your wife said is the final. Woman, what do we do? Does she, does she need to come back home to take some clothes with him because he is going to prison? I don't, she should not come home. You will not go home. You hear? From here, you're going to prison. That's what is happening there. Is that so? That is there. Europe. America, Western world, the head is the wife. Because it's a kingdom of decay. God is not in their minds. The head of all of them is the child. <laughs> the child is the head of the father and the mother. Don't beat your child. If your child calls the police to come to your house, if the child says, carry father and mother, these people have been torturing me. Hey, let's go. Let's go. You have no defense. The child is to determine whether you should come back or not. It's simple. So, now America has been the headquarters of civilization for some decades or centuries. And this has come over to Africa. Europe America, the wind has come over to Africa. It's now filling the world. Iniquity shall abound. It does abound. So much so that this statement for the husband is the head of the wife. Is under contention. Is under argument. And the Bible itself can be taken to court for this sentence. The Bible itself can be taken to court to be condemned from circulation. 
because he has is is writing things that and that is confusing human being. Wow. So now in our world there is no headship. All these boys and boy, these girls that are growing up, they have no fair headship. Headship has been destroyed. This wearing of trousers and putting on the dresses of men has wiped out the spirit of submission in women. Somebody called me from the north. He said, he came there for NYC and got married to his wife. He said, and the wife too came for NYC there, I think, and they got married. Last year, but marriage has, is tired now. This woman did not know headship. Who is the head? No, she's not aware. She is there. The two of them are independent partners. It's what she chooses to do, she does. I think Patrick, you should know the people. Patrick number two. It's what she chooses to do. She does. This man said, I have looked at marriages. I have not seen the one that I will say is an example. I see this. The wife is giving problem to her husband. I see that one. The wife is giving problem to her husband. I see that one. The wife is... So, my wife is, 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 is a committee of women. She's even the youngest among them because she just married last year. No headship. No headship. No headship over anything. No headship. Who cooks for who? Whoever is hungry should know where the kitchen is. Yes. Are you hungry? You don't know the kitchen. Go to kitchen. Whom are you talking to? My husband. Your husband. But for the husband is the head of the wife and can instruct the wife and can command the wife and the wife is supposed to be. No, that one is not working again. That one is not working again in families. That one is not working again. Her money is her money. This is my money. This is my car. This is my house. A woman talking like that, Christianity is gone. The Christianity we know is gone. Is it the woman that is like we are to Jesus that will be independent? Can we be independent from Jesus and be Christians? Never. The Christianity we know, the woman is in full submission to her husband. Full. The husband speaks a word, he settles it. In the world, maybe they are still enjoying somehow in the world. Because in the world, bring me water, I want to take bath. The man is lying on the bed. I expect the woman to rise up and go and bring water. They went to walk together to farm. They came, please be fast and bring me food. If the food delays, hey, mama, mama who? <laughs> mama blessing. Why did you delay your food? Eh? Bow! What, what, what did you do? Bow, bow. Tomorrow when they come, make sure food, come, food will come. The food will come. That's how they settle it in the world. But in, this, in Christ that you will not beat, you will not touch. Because hey, I want, uh, if I do anything, I will go to hell. And say, <laughs> no headship here. No headship. You won't beat me. What will you do? You will not beat me. God will beat you. 
because you want to destroy order in the family you want to cause his servant to backslide you are keeping his anger his servant in anger God will handle you you want to join the world have no respect for your husband no fear the way the world is doing it you are bringing it to the church why am I dealing with women this is holiness ministry if you don't submit to your husbands you destroy this ministry you destroy your husbands if you don't and if a child is a disturbing child in the church is sending the mother out of church is it not so the mother cannot be there. He's crying for everybody. I can't. You're disturbing everybody. You carry the mother out of church. By force. You want to carry your husband out of ministry. Ministry of holiness. Because we will not allow you. We will never allow you. And it will affect him. Why are you doing like that? Why? Why? You're not submitting to your husband. No fear. No respect. People submit to these noble people, but their wives, no. These are noble men. And God gave them authority over you. You refused. You refuse. Because you must be like Americans. You must be like Europeans. Who have no God there. That, that's what is happening in the world now. Equal. None is subject to another. None is obeying another. And the, woman, and the man. Who does not want to struggle. His spirit is struggling. He does not want to get defiled. He is always crying to the living God. God will spare you. Is it not God who put in scripture? Wives, obey your husband. Will he not defend his word? Will you do all those things and say rapture will come, you are going? Never. Not the Christianity we know. Not it at all. Amen. That is it. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Now that your husband is not your head, Christ is not your head. Christ is not your head. Listen, the standard is you don't have any money that is your own. All monies belong to your husband you must give full account hide nothing you're hiding it for your damnation give full account of your money i'm talking about what pastor's wife having a righteous man as your husband you have no money you have no car it's your husband's car I no longer live, Jesus live it in me. Oh yes, you no longer live. Your husband is your head. You get it? You know I can formulate something. <laughs> your husband is your head. You no longer live. My mind destroyed is dead because the two shall be one flesh. Children should be directed to their father in obedience. Do not allow any child to disdain his father and to be coming to your side, be forming a conversation between you and children. And the children, you are, you are pointing to the father. And they are growing up with disdain for their father. You. You get their own favor. 
Don't do that. Point them to their father. Let them love their father. Let them respect their father. Jesus Christ points us to the father. Is he not Lord too? But he was pointing us to the father. Somebody came and said, good master. Who is good but God alone? Because if you know God, you will know me. I came not to exalt myself, but to exalt the father. If you really exalt the father, he that loveth the father, loveth the son. That is it. But if you put me, my, bring attention to myself and not to the father, when I disappear from this place, all I've brought about God will vanish. So, God expects you to do this. The husband is the head of the wife. Respect that headship. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Now, you argue, no, my husband is not doing it correctly. No, I don't, I, in fact, the reason why I don't show him my money, the reason why I don't do, I'm talking to pastor's wife, so forget about generality of people. If it's generality of people, I will say wisdom is profitable. Those are sinners. They use money to take alcohol. They use money to chase women. They use money to promote their pride. Don't sponsor their pride. Don't sponsor alcoholism. Don't sponsor immorality in your husband if he is abusing your money. I will bring wisdom to it. But I'm talking about pastors. I'm talking about pastors in holiness revival movement that I preach to both of you on holiness. Both of you. So you, can, you must be different from women outside. Your attitude must be different. Your approach must be different from women outside. We're in community. We're training. We are perfecting for heaven. We're teaching other churches how they should live. God chose us for it. How do we have inflam infirmities and blemishes? No. No. Tell them no. No. That is it. And my own, my husband doesn't give me trouble. If I say, let's go here, he just follows. If I say, let's sit down, let's do nothing, he just follows. If I say, my husband, in fact, if I say, there is no food tonight, I'm too tired, my husband will say, okay. He will go and look for kuli kuli. <laughs> yes, woman, when you capture a person, in your fight, you have captured a person, they call him captive. Your husband is a captive. Your own captive. Otherwise, the God that met man never put him lower than a woman. That a woman should control him. Your husband is a captive. You captured him. Or you bewitched him. That's why you just follow, 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 follow. Hey, hey, mommy, where do I go? I say... <laughs> I'm telling you. So don't think that uh, it is holiness. Which holiness? Holiness that disobeys God, that gave up his throne to you. And God said, my glory will I not give another. God will tell your husband to give you glory. Give up his own glory to you. You captured it. You bewitched him. That is it. Fear is inside him. To him, man, I came to the house. I saw your wife sitting down. And uh, you were the one that brought, forth, brought food from the kitchen and put before them, before her, so that you people were eating. What happened? Bro, <laughs> I don't want problem. And I don't want embarrassment in your presence. That's why I did it. 
if I had told her, you would have been angry yourself for her response. Yes. You would have been angry yourself. So I didn't want problem. Is it this man that you say your husband is very simple. In fact, he can bring food in the kitchen. He can even go and cook. If I tell him I'm tired, that my husband is a man of God. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Hey. We are serious. We are, go- we are, I said, we have entered New Testament. All this while we have been in the Old Testament. J- 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 gentle, gentle, gentle. Any woman that will be behaving like that in this New Testament will make you an example. Because you want to shame holiness revival movement. You want to destroy the qualities we have built into your husband. You want to take over the ministry. You, what do you have that you want to take over? What do you know that you want to take over? Is it not a fleshly business? What did Sarah have that she, she would take over from Abraham? What do you have? It's grace the Lord gave you. Obey the rule. Obey your husband. Your husband cannot say stop and you stop. Do it now and you will do it now. Don't go there and you will not go there. Come back. And you will not come back. Wonderful. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be subject to their own husbands in everything. I say own husbands. Everybody say own husbands. husbands. Say it again. The husbands are not in the same qualification. Other husbands are higher. Your husbands are not of the same riches, possessions. Other husbands have more. But respect your own husband. Don't respect other people's husband above your husband. Something is marvelous. Women receive it. A child. A child from maybe uh, a child from maybe two to six. In that innocent free heart. Goes with the father or mother. Even if the father is crippled, rolling, rolling, he'll be following him. He will never downlook his mother. In fact, he does not know any other person but his mother or the father. Crippled! He'll go there. Identify there. Why is it you that will not respect your husband because you have reason? He's not dressing well. You can help him dress well. Why is it you looking down on your husband because he doesn't have money? You are better than him. You are beautiful. I'm costly. This man is lucky to get to marry me. It is worst with him that he married you. Better he didn't marry you and marry somebody who will see herself lower and respect him than to see somebody who sees herself so high and command respect from him. I will not give him his respect. Respect your husband. Honor them. Do it in the church. Do it publicly. Don't be doing like uh, this woman in Benin City. That in her testimony, she say, Oh, in fact, how I obey my husband. I, I treat my husband like a king. 
hey, this human being. I treat my husband like a king. I bring food for him. I do this. I make him sit on the chair. I do this. I kneel down before him. In her testimony, when a woman in the house, I said, what do you see in the house? She said, eh. <laughs> the husband is a slave in that house. This woman has trained her children. Even the daughter told me, this, if the husband is cooking mess to eat, nobody touches that pot. Nobody bothers about it. It's like a madman among them. But they have mouth. They have mouth to tell the world. God will know how to handle them. So don't go and be telling testimonies that you, of what you don't do. What you know you don't do. Why you want to testify about it? Be doers of the world. Are not hearers only, are not preachers only, be doers of the world. That's what the word of God is telling us. For the husband is the head of the wife. Yes. Verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, we are here for Christ. Everything we do here is for Christ and we're subject unto him. I can't remember any act of disobedience to Jesus by me all through this period. I can't remember. So, do your, try to and check whether you will not remember any act of disobedience to your husband during this period. Check up. Because the Bible says, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in some things. Is that what the Bible says? In some things. But to some women, in some things. Because money is not part of it. In some things. Their body is not part of it. In some things. Which are these things actually? What are those things you, you can manage to submit? What are they? Some things. Some what? Are you even the one that cooks the food? No, we have servants in the house. We have children in the house. They do the cooking. Then what are those things? Do you fetch water for him to take bath? No, you have shower in the bathroom. So that was, you don't do that. Then what are the things? Do you wash his clothes? No, we have washing machine. Well, I'm telling you. Then what are the things? Submit in all things. That thing that Satan came to you to hide is the thing you should reveal and submit. Because hiding is darkness. To hide is to live in darkness. To hide is to live in darkness. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, husbands, you have married already. And some of these women are stronger than you. David cried unto God in, Acts of, I mean, in Psalm 18. Because some things were too much for, Dev for David. The enemies were too strong for David. I'm telling you. In verse 17, Psalm 18, verse 17. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me. Read the remaining phrase there. One, two, go. For they were too strong for me. If you have this woman that, was, that is too strong, husband, what should you do? Psalm 18, verse 3. 
I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Your wife has become one of the enemies that does not want you to live holy. That does not want you to go to heaven. That wants to slay your soul and all your weights mean nothing. Some of you even try to report to others. It has no meaning. <laughs> A man brought his wife to me. Of the stubbornness of the wife. I talked to the wife. Do this, do this. Very gentle and loving. She was crying. When they left me and went, he said, <laughs> you saw me crying before the pastor? I was pitying you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Even me, I'm, I'm thinking, what do I do with this type of human beings? Ah! Hey! Small girl! I was in love walking out. I'm sorry. You are pity. <laughs> this type of your mom being, I'm telling you. It's too strong for the man. Now, the man was having the hope when we come to pastor, he will hear. She will hear. They have reached pastor. She really cried. But it was in pity to this man. <laughs> I will not obey. <laughs> Wonderful. So, in that case, verse 3, Psalm 18, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. His prayer. Carry that woman to God in prayer. You know how to fast? Fast for her. Because Satan has laid a hand on her. The Satan has taken over the heart. Your words have no meaning. Is prayer. Is prayer. And when God comes in, He is God. He knows how to handle the person. He is God. And He knows how to handle the person. How to handle your wife. Does not God know how to handle Satan? He knows how to handle said How much more a human being? How much less a human being? So pray. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me. And the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress I called upon the, upon the Lord and cried unto my God because you are going to hell. You are not operating smooth righteousness. Here is somebody. is blocking it. Your heart is not peaceful. You can't even read the Bible. You desire to have her. You can't have her. Days are passing. She doesn't bother She's not even sitting down to think, shouldn't this man be hungry now? No, that's not even part of her thought. After two months, you came and said whether she should think that, uh, she should know that at least now. No, she's not ready. She's not ready. You cry to God. Cry! Because she's trying to feel you with lust. A woman told her husband, as for me, forget. But I give you a chance to get women. 
I won't have problem with them. Just only don't get them near where we are. <laughs> God will smite her head. Can you imagine this? There are people like that. It's only God that can deliver you from them. It's only God that can change that character, break that character, punish that human being, appear to him to her in a dream. One heart of hellfire. A woman that will sleep with her husband and use pillow to separate the... Is it separate the room? A bed is a room. They separate it with pillow. When the Lord came to her in Revelation, the Lord said, if this were the end of your life, I would have dropped you in hell because of my servant. The, 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 the husband was a pastor. He's a pastor. I would have dropped you in hell. You disturb my husband to pray. Maybe I will get my, hus- my wife now. He won't pray. To go and do some commitment. Maybe I can have my wife now. It, it, those things are blocking him. A creature of God that is doing like that because he does not recognize God. The law will, the law will handle you. God will do it. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and I cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears. The cry of your husband has entered the ears of God about your life. Well, I don't know what makes you proud. Sickness. Tomorrow, yesterday I was sick. Tomorrow sick. Next week sick. The other week sick. The sickness is not for hospital. No, hospital doesn't handle this type of sickness. It is the sickness of a stubborn woman who does not want submission. Proper sickness will come. If you are using pretended sickness, the Lord wants that man that was telling lie to his wife. Is that not so? He wants him. You have the problem. And you're deceiving your wife. You stop that. That was I deal with you. Tell the truth. By truth, I will set you free. I will do it for you. I will honor you. So don't be using sickness to be destroying these people. Take it to God. Pray. Then the earth shook and trembled. God has heard. The foundations of the, of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wrought. God was angry because of oppression of the righteous. Because of the way the woman was treating her husband. God was angry. He was wrought. There went out, there went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth. Devout coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down to the house. And darkness was under his feet. And he wrote upon the cherub and did fly. Yeah, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He, he made darkness his sacred place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies at the brightness that was before him. His thick clouds passed and hailstones and coals of fire were released. The Lord also turned out in the heavens and the highest gave his voice Hailstones and coals of fire. Why should you be under chastisement in that house? Because you won't submit to the word of God. Why? Should you move God against yourself? Yeah. He sent out his arrows and scattered them. And he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of waters were seen and the foundations of the world were discovered. At thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils, 
He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy. The Lord deliver you man from your strong wife that cannot bend. The Lord is your hope. The Lord is your hope. He will handle it. That's why you should cry to him. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me for they were too strong for me. See this woman from my kingdom what married this man for the purpose of destroying him. Did you see the man? Heavy stomach that sat on a chair because his wife did it. Terrible. Go handle that person. I'm telling you. So women be very careful. Don't do it in the church here. If we discover you, you won't be, we will make a public example of you. You will hate it that you were born. Your shame will be forever. So be very careful. Honor your husband. Respect your husband. Don't allow Satan to say, I will contend. That's from Satan. It has never helped people who did it. Yeah. They prevented me in the day of my calamity. But the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Now, verse 20. Are you there? Let us read it. I'm at verse 20. Let's read it to verse 24. One, two, go. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands had he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me and I did not put away his statues from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore, they recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. At 25, with the merciful, Thou will show thyself merciful. With the upright, thou will show thyself upright. 26. With the pure, thou will show thyself pure. And with the forward, thou will show thyself forward. Great message to husbands. Because some of you, By your life, your wife was properly advised by the devil to treat you like that. By your life. Your wife was properly advised by her friends to treat you like that. How you see women like no help, no money is coming to your wife. None. Are you seeing how you eat? Have you examined how she gets the money to feed you, to feed the family? Money answered all things. What do you do with the money? You never buy clothes for her. You never dress her. Even children's school fees, your mind is not there. You have gone. Who must provide food for children? She's the one. Always sweating. Always suffering. You change her character. She's not strong to, to stand on that. Some few women can, stand, can withstand, but not all. You cost your wife to come to that state. You are never a friend to that woman. You are, you are brutal. Your face is inimical. Your face. 
no smile no love in your speech she was a house girl that you married and she felt she's important she has, she has a degree at least in this society if a woman has a degree she should be respected because she's, she is schooled but your own it doesn't mean anything you yourself don't have degree Maybe because you don't have a degree, you don't need the value of having a degree. So you treat her without respect. So she came up and said, okay, I too. The sparrow said, since hunters are shooting like this, I must determine the way I will fly. You cost it. You cost it. You, you will come and never touch her. You never touch her. That's why she made up her mind, if you will not touch her, if you will not develop interest, she too will recoil. But you open and say, ah, for two months now, you cost the two months. You cost it. It is the way you live. Did you consider her? When you bring your friends to the house, you speak against her openly to your friends, openly to your relations. Announcing her to the, to the universe that she's wicked. And there's, who will judge between the two of you? You have the microphone. He is sitting in the congregation. Can the person sitting in the congregation compete with the one with the microphone? But what you are doing is injustice. It's oppression. That is what you are doing. You didn't train her to pray. Because to you, she, I don't want to waste my time. And God knows that you are hurting yourself. Because two are better than one. It, she, would, she needs to be trained. You need to be patient. Even if she they can pray for only 10 minutes. Give her the 10 minutes. Then go and do your own prayer. Because you need to pray more than 10 minutes. Gradually, the next time it will be 20. And that's how you raise her up. So check up yourself too. Check up. Otherwise, when you go to God and say, Oh God, my wife, you say, go and sit down. Go and examine yourself. Are you righteous yourself? Are you diligent? Are you careful? Are you thoughtful? Are you doing it well? He that must have a friend must show himself friendly. Do you show yourself friendly to her? Which way do you want her to open up easily for you? It, God will defend righteous husbands. This defense I'm quarreling these people about is for righteous husbands. Not sinners. Proud people. Careless people. We don't consider. Have you considered that your wife is here? She should have some money in her pocket. She may buy something. Or somebody, she can come across somebody. She can give 1,000 naira. And it will honor her. Somebody, oh, auntie, auntie, auntie. And it's rejoicing, oh, auntie, auntie. Auntie has nothing in her pocket. Where have you reduced auntie to nothing like this? Kai, you reduce auntie to nothing. Is she not a human being? Why are you not thinking positive of her? Which other thing are you doing to honor her? Please check up yourself. Let a man examine, examine himself. And so let him blame his wife. If you examine yourself in righteousness. And see you are righteous. Then you are free to blame her. Before God. It's still wisdom not to carry her reports to sinners. But you can report to leaders who cover it up and not ill treat her. Well, today, now, submission of the wife in marriage. Go, go on. Let's go and finish the hospital and take your something. You will come back. Another submission is waiting for you. Rest up upon your feet and give thanks to God for what the Lord has taught you.
Worship you, Father. Worship you, Lord. Worship you, King. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you. Give grace. Let not the people be angry. Let them be happy. Let them be convicted. Let not the devil come to speak to these women. And see, he's embarrassing you. He's talking about you. He's rebuke that. Cast that out. Let them be broken. Let them face the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I've sinned against you. Does the trumpet blow for nothing? Anointing, oh my God, keep me burning. Keep me burning to the close of it. I need your power, oh my God, to keep me living. I need your grace, oh Jesus, I pray. I need your oil in my life to keep me burning. Keep me burning to the close of the heat. Open your mouth and pray for your wives. And you yourself too. Woman, pray for yourself. Let not the Lord, the devil use you to a fake holiness re revival movement by carrying your husband away or doing something that we say no and your, your husband being ignorant man instead of supporting the church he say, ah, why are you doing my wife like that because you're under captivity thank you Jesus worship you Lord Jesus name we pray that is why you will not want your wife to miss the presence of God you don't know when the rapture will come you don't know when God will visit for her liberation don't be saying money this one message is more than money if God changes this woman for you what a treasure what a blessing. So don't play carelessness. Don't. Hasten her. Be there. Because the Bible says, Husbands love your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might cleanse it by the washing of water by the world. This world that we're speaking is washing, washing her life. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. It is the world that will walk and produce a glorious person. And your wife is not where the world is. And you think you have saved money to do another thing with it. You're hurting yourself. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? It's better to be on her stop in the hot sun than to sit with a brawling, complaining woman in the house, in the room. You prefer to sit with a complaining woman. Something that will chisel complaints from her. And open her eyes to the living God. You are not aware. Tell God you are sorry. 
you labor on your wife and you pray that your husband must carry you every time because you will go to heaven you need it Thank you for answering. 